So our third case presents 86-year-old female with multiple comorbidities who in 2019 underwent coloscopy where a lesion in ascending colon close to ileocecal valve was found and it was resected by EMR. Uh, later on in January this year, a follow-up colonoscopy was um, performed and there was uh, found a local residual neoplasia. Uh, now an EMR, M EMR uh, to resect the local neoplasia will be the, uh, performed by uh, Professor Binmiller and in assistance of Dr. Pekarek. And we will discuss the problem of recurrent neoplasia following EMR and also the technique of EMR in these uh, difficult locations itself. Now to endoscopy room. Good morning. Well, I hope everyone has their scuba gear on or your snorkel because we're taking a deep dive underwater. I've intubated the colon using the water exchange method, which means we are exchanging the dirty contents of the colon. Remember, the colon is normally filled with water. That's why with capsule endoscopy, you can diagnose polyps in the colon so well, because it's an underwater exam. That's what capsule endoscopy is. And that actually was part of the, my inspiration to begin doing colonoscopies underwater. So when you're underwater, you can see the view here. And I'm using, just to introduce the scope, this is a Fuji scope. Now it's a scope I don't use in my unit. I use the Olympus 190Q. But this uh, Fuji scope is an adult colonoscope, 3.8 millimeter working channel, and it has near focus, or it has what they call optical zoom. So it's not electronic zoom, it's optical zoom. And I've turned the gas off and I intubate to the cecum. Let's uh, turn the near focus on so that you can see how this works or the optical zoom. You can see how now we can see the pit pattern so much better. And I always take a moment to look at the AO, the appendicular orifice, and I just want to demonstrate to you how you use water to interrogate the mucosa. So it's an additional tool, something you don't have with gas. You cannot interrogate with gas, but you can interrogate with the water. So I can fill the appendiceal orifice and I not uncommonly discover typically sessile serrated adenomas. They're very common involving the appendiceal orifice. But this appendiceal orifice looks completely normal. But you can see here right adjacent, I think there was a polyp here that I saw that was uh, missed previously. And in just a moment, I'm going to show you the lesion. Let's see if I can find that other polyp. So the, the technique is to circle around the lumen like this and use, there's the polyp, look at that. See, and see how it kind of floats here? And this is an adenoma. You can see the pit pattern is very typical of an adenoma. And uh, this is something you would cold snare. We can do that afterwards, but I want to focus on the main lesion. So a small lesion, less than one centimeter, I cold snare, and I do that underwater as well. You get a deeper level of resection if you do cold snaring. I do not cold snare for larger lesions underwater because you get some bleeding and that bleeding will then cloud your, uh, vis your visualization, your image. So let's circle back now very slowly. You can see there's still some contamination. So I'm clearing out with the water exchange method, circling around like this, pulling out the residue. And here you can start to see the icy valve coming to the left. Now, if you go underwater, the icy valve is not afraid of you because you're not putting gas in, and you should be able to more easily intubate the terminal ileum. So just pulling back slowly, it's oriented towards me, and I'm putting the gas in. Now, you can see there's an adenoma here, so it's right at the icy valve, but I want to know whether the terminal ileum is involved. So I'm slowly turning the scope in here in this area to try to get into the terminal ileum. There it is. See, there's the opening. 
It's opening to me. You see the villi so beautifully. If you just very slowly push the scope, it'll just like a boat, it'll flow up the river. So you can intubate long distances into the ilium with this underwater technique. But you can see how beautiful the images look. There's just some contamination. That's the only reason why. Now the nurses, let's go even on another level of near focus here, maybe. Let's take this off. Let's see. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's better. Yeah, look at this villi. Now you can understand why the surface area is increased by such magnitudes by these little villi. Look how beautiful they are. All right. Now we can also use the equivalent of MBI. Let's put that on for a moment. Where's the MBI? Okay, or your, your, your version of NBI. Okay, it's just another way of looking at it. You can see, I think, the vascular pattern a little bit better like this. And again, you can see how the water is used to interrogate the mucosa. It also gives you a, turn that off now, it gives you an assessment of the compliance of the mucosa. So of course, if you have scar tissue or cancer, it's going to have a different compliance, so you can evaluate the compliance. So here I'm coming back very slowly, same technique, circling like this around the lumen, and I want to look, as I come out, I want to keep this open, and I'm also asking, so I have, look at this here, you can see the opening, this is why you can even resect lesions going a little bit into the terminal ilium with this underwater technique because the opening to the terminal ilium faces you. Whereas when you use gas, you push that all away, which is why sometimes you may have more difficulty intubating the terminal ilium. So think about using this technique if you have difficulty um, getting into the terminal ilium. Is this the normal white light right now? This is normal white yeah, light? Yeah. Can everybody is anxious to see the lesion. Okay, I'm sorry. So suspense, yes. Yeah. So this is the lesion. See how it beautifully floats here? And you saw the image on the, uh, on the introduction. That was with gas, and it looked much, much bigger. But this is floating in the lumen. And I think we can get this out with maybe, let's just use a um, 33 snare. You can see the villus pattern here. It looks like a kudo... 3L, maybe it's a 4. Yeah, maybe it's a 4. Definitely branched villi. What I look for is just the homogeneity. It's very villous, so it's very vascular, so that's important. So let's move forward. I know I have limited time. So I have assisting me here Andrea, and I have the two uh, Joannas, right? Jana, Jana 1 and Jana 2. Okay. <laughs> So this is a captivator to snare, and I'm just going to push this in. Boris is to my left, and Boris, I'm gonna have you just hold the scope here at the patient's anus so it doesn't slip back. Uh, can, two questions. Um, when, when you have a lesion at the IC valve, do you uh, use a special scope because uh, you anticipate you need to retroflex sometimes? I always use an adult colonoscope. The reason for that is because I want to be able to suction alongside my snare. So let me just show you the, um, the technique. We want to get the lesion at 6 o'clock if possible, and that is why I'm going to have Boris help me. I have to admit the image is just a little bit foreign to me with this scope, so which is always a little bit of the difficulty when using a different scope than one that you're used to using at home. And it is a little uh, contaminated here as well. And we're not getting gas in, right? Is the water bottle still full? So the assistant, you can see this patient had very severe diverticulosis, which is why you see uh, the fecal list here, uh, that uh, the contamination. This is partly why it was so contaminated. I think I fell back a little bit, so let me go back in again. Can, can you uh, quickly explain the principle of the or the advantages of of an underwater like you so don't need the, to you don't need to lift etc yes so the most important advantage is you can eliminate the need for um some mucosal injection because everything is floating up the muscular is appropriate is like a frame it stays round on the outside 
and it's only the mucosa and the submucosa that floats on, uh, floats up into the lumen. That's something I discovered uh, when I was doing EUS to stage a uh, a polyp. One second, let me just. I think I fell back, and that's why I'm not seeing Professor the Professor Ben Moller, we are sorry. We have to move uh, to a different room. We will come back uh, soon to you. But uh, okay, I'll get in front of the lesion and let you know. Okay. I just need to get back in position. Okay. This is why uh, aspiration is so important. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I had to proceed to capture the lesion using a 33 millimeter snare. It's the largest snare that is available. Um, maybe a 25 would have worked, but I just wanted to be sure that I am able to capture this on block. So the goal is on block resection. You just open the snare and let the lesion float up into the snare lumen. Push the snare down flat against the mucosa. You can use various maneuvers back and forth with your snare. You can do to and fro, um, you know, side to side. You can use torque and crimp. These are all maneuvers that I use to maximize the amount of tissue that you capture in your snare. Because the lumen is contracted, you can capture a larger surface area. So Mun was asking about the advantage of underwater EMR. It's that the ability to resect on block is significantly higher, and we've shown that now in four randomized controlled trials. So we're really getting closer to what we try to achieve with ESD, which is on block resection. Now, after strangulating off the blood supply to this polyp, you can see how it changes color. So that's the confirmation that we have at least um, a, have a decent chance of getting this on block. I don't know, maybe on the left side, because I couldn't see it so well, we might have some residual, we'll see. Now, in terms of the resection itself, you can see this is a very villous lesion. It definitely has good blood supply. So what I'm going to do is start with a little bit of forced coag, but then I'm going to switch to auto cut. I'm using Effect 5, which maximizes the coagulation component, and I'm using wattage should be 100. I see it's 180 here, and we need to change that to 100, please, not 180. So 100, 100, 100, 100. So very good. So, so Jana, you're Jana, right? Jana 2. <laughs> so Jana 2 is right here. So Jana, what I want you to do, and I don't do this myself. I always have the assistant do it. But I do uh, educate them that they're just to hold the snare tightly until I tell them to start resecting. So I want to wait to see some bubbles, and I want to see some blanching, some whitening discoloration before I cut through. So I keep my foot on the yellow pedal, which is the cutting current, after I give the coag first, just to prime it. And I'm going to wait to see some bubbles. The bubbles is an indication that I'm starting to get the heat effect, and it's a heat sink effect, which minimizes the thermal depth of injury. So I'm going to back off a little bit, and as I do this, I'm also going to give a little bit of water here. And now with this Fuji scope, it kind of comes in and out of focus here, so I guess I'll have to come off one. But you can see how it's violaceous, right? So I think we have a good chance of getting this on block. Now I just want to say as a disclaimer, this patient has pan-diverticulosis. Many times I thought I was in the cecum looking at the AO, and in fact, it was diverticula. So I'm just praying there is not a diverticulum at the base of this lesion. So we'll see. All right, so now first step is on the force coag. And I'm just priming it a little bit. So just giving a little bit of force coag. Now I've done that. And now I'm going to go to the cutting current now, the yellow petal. And I'm going to look for some bubbles as I do this. She just holds, see, oh, I just cut through. That's okay. That's all right. And sometimes she's just holding it and it will just cut through. And I want to push this away. And you see some fat tissue. There's a lot of fat tissue 
in the uh, right colon. The radiologist called that. Now, this is the real AO there, I think. I'm just going to pull back. They call that the halo sign. So there's our lesion, right? I'm going to just keep pulling back now, looking for the defect now, very slowly, circling around. Here's the IC valve. Okay, we have a little bit of bleeding here, so I'm going to use vigorous irrigation, go on some near focus here. There we go. I think there's a very good chance I got this all on block. Yeah. This is all just some mucosal fat, right? You can see the vessel here bleeding. And now, see, that you can pinpoint the bleeding, and I can use a coag grasper now, or a hot biopsy forceps, yeah. and just coagulate this, right? Wow. But it looks very nice. Look, you see the terminal ileum here, right? You see the villus mucosa there. So this looks like a very nice, and I interrogate the margins slowly like this, using the cap to press against. Now, by the way, always use a cap, so important. So I'm just holding this. Boris, if you could hold the scope here. So this what scope uh, is a bit floppy for my taste. And, and we, we, we can change the coagulation. So Jana, yes, we're gonna use now a force coag, or you can use soft coag if you prefer. I use force coag, doesn't matter. So look how the terminal ileum just floats kind of out there. Yeah, but underwater, sometimes soft coag is not uh, doing properly. It's always. true. It doesn't yeah. work well. This is why I uh, use yeah. forced coag. That's correct. Uh, so this is the uh, grasper. Uh, 35 is okay. For cost reasons, I'm often using um, a just a hot biopsy forceps. Now, you uh, can yeah. see the problem is the forceps comes out at 6 o'clock. My lesion is up there at 6, okay. right? So it's a little bit more difficult so I'm just going to sorry, sorry. I can blame Boris if I can't get there <laughs> yeah, Boris just torque I, I a little bit like this there he goes I have a great assistant here I'm using there's uh, the okay they want to switch to another room that's fine I'm just going to slowly move this in here like this and Jenna can you please push the forceps forward a little bit you can see how everything is getting open, please. And advance, please. Come on, second. See, it goes out of focus, close, please. Pull, please, a little bit, Jenna. I have both my hands are used. Pull just a little bit, pull, retract just a little bit. So you always want to tent when you are doing this. So I'm sorry it's out of focus, but that's the scope. And, um, I, I don't have this issue with the Olympus. Not to say it's better or worse, it's just different. I think it's good. Open, Jana. Okay, close. Okay, See so how I think we got it. Ken very nicely. Boris, pull the thank you very much back, for your perfect presentation. Okay, and we have to switch to cholangioscopy. Okay. Thank you, you very see, much. Pull back, Jana, please. Pull back the yes. There we go. See, it stopped.